Hello everyone and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we're going to cover the fundamentals of prompt engineering. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first question is, what do we even mean by prompt engineering? So I would say three years ago, no one even knew what prompt is or what prompt engineering is, I would say. This term kind of started to pop out after ChatGPT became mainstream and AI became popular and everyone is kind of using artificial intelligence. And the idea of prompt engineering is the practice of designing and optimizing text input to a generative artificial intelligence model or an LLM to obtain desired responses. It is simply an art of communicating with a generative artificial intelligence model. That's all. So think of it as now you have that digital brain. It has been trained like ChatGPT, for example. And now I would like to communicate to it. So it's an art. It's not like a haphazard. And the idea is that garbage in, garbage out, right? So we need to make sure that the prompt is um, explaining exactly what we are looking for. And let me show you a quick example. Let's assume that you would like to ask ChatGPT to recommend a book. So what I could do is I can say, recommend a book, and that would be my prompt. That would be the input to the artificial intelligence model. And what you see is maybe I can be a little bit more specific. So if I say, please recommend a fiction book. So that, of course, is an enhancement because now the AI knows exactly what you want. What I'm going to do next is, well, I can say recommend a historical fiction book set in World War II. And that's much, much better because now I am explaining exactly what I'm looking for. So I included a lot of prompts as well for you in this course, especially when we build our custom GPTs or custom AI models specifically with our own data sets. But the idea here is as you go down, now you have high quality prompts. We're going to guide the artificial intelligence model to generate better outputs. Okay, so what are the key prompt components? So overall, this is, I would say, the best way to structure a prompt. First, we add context. Second, we add instructions. Then we add input data. And then we add what we call an output indicator. Let me show you what I mean. So when it comes to context, the idea here is we want to set the background knowledge. We want it to kind of tell the artificial intelligence model that you are, let's say, an expert financial analyst. So now the AI knows what you're talking about. Maybe you are a five-year-old, let's say, child, something like that. You are, let's say, an expert in, expert PhD scientist in, let's say, AI, something like that. So we set the context ahead of time. And that will be the first part of the prompt. Next, what we do is we set clear instructions. So I'm going to say a clear statement of the desired goal. So now I set the context. Next, I can say, classify the following text as positive, neutral, or negative. So this is clear instruction of what exactly what I'm asking the artificial intelligence model to do for me. Next, we can add input data. And this is the data the model needs to, proce to process and to produce basically an output. So now I can say, Apple stock increased by 2% in today's trading session. So this is the input that I want the AI model to process to generate an output, okay? So this, basically, I'm looking for a sentiment. So I would like to classify this text here as either positive, neutral, or negative, okay? What I'm going to do, finally, the fourth component is an output indicator. Basically, it tells the model the format of the output. So I can say sentiment colon, and this is going to be the format of the output that the model is going to use. And that would be simply a well-structured prompt. I said the background knowledge. I said the context first. I give it clear instructions. Please do this. I specify the input to the model. And then I tell it what the output should look like. And that will be the output indicator. Let me show you if I feed this prompt to an artificial intelligence model, ChatGPT or GPT 4.0, what you're going to get. If I insert this prompt here, which is assume that you're an expert financial analyst, classify this text, and this is the text, and I add sentiment, colon, and I leave it empty here. 
basically what the AI model is gonna generate is gonna generate sentiment colon positive. Well, because here we're talking about a stock that increased in value by 2%. And here's gonna even explain it to you. It's gonna tell you, well, the text indicates a positive movement in Novo Nordisk stock price, which typically reflects positive sentiment. Okay, so this is, I would say, kind of an overview of how to structure a prompt. Let me show you the different techniques when it comes to prompt engineering. So the first one is what we call it zero shot prompting. So a zero shot prompting refers to the ability of generative artificial intelligence models to generate responses without being provided with any prior examples. So let me show you. Here I'm gonna say the prompt is gonna be as follows. Tell me the sentiment of the following headline and categorize it to either positive, negative, or neutral. And then I'm gonna give it that news. I'm gonna say new airline between Seattle and San Francisco offers a great opportunity to, uh, for both passengers and investors. If I take this prompt and I feed it in here to the generative artificial intelligence model like ChatGPT, the output here is gonna be positive. This is what we call it zero shot prompting because we didn't give any examples to the AI model to follow. We are kind of relying on what the AI is gonna generate or can think about it, okay? And the model relies here on the broad general knowledge learned from its training data to complete the task. Again, the name sounds fancy, but it's really pretty simple. If I don't have examples, we call it zero shot prompting, okay? Okay. What, if I, what about few shot prompting? So with few shot prompting, I'm gonna give it examples, basically. Few examples. Let me show you. So here I'm gonna say, tell me the sentiment of the following. Here are some examples. I'm gonna say, if for example, you find Apple stock declined 2% today, the answer is gonna be negative. If you find, as another example, Tesla stock gained 5% after successful self-driving demo, the answer is positive. Open AI expanded its uh, user base to 100 million, answer, and now I leave it blank. And basically I'm expecting the AI model to generate the output here. So that's why we call it few shot prompting because it involves providing a few example pairs of input and the desired output to the generative AI model to guide its response. So now think of it as I'm basically showing the AI few examples, that's why we call it few shot prompting to generate a more accurate result. So the output here is gonna be positive as an example. Okay, let's go ahead and cover the last prompting technique, which is known as chain of thought prompting. So chain of thought prompting is a technique that improves the reasoning ability of artificial intelligence models by breaking down complex questions or tasks into small manageable steps. It simply mimics how humans reason and solve problems by systematically breaking down the decision-making process. Let me show you what I mean. This is a standard prompting. So what I could do here is I can say, this is a cue with a question. I'm gonna say, Sarah has 10 pencils. She gives four pencils to her friend and buys a pack of five more pencils. How many pencils does Sarah have now? So the AI model is gonna say, well, the answer is 11, okay? So now I can say, the library had 50 books, they lent 15 books to students and received seven more books as a donation. How many books are the library now? If I feed in this basically input here to the AI model, the output is gonna be wrong. It's gonna be 57. And of course, please note that this is just with the earlier versions, I would say, of GPT, uh, of chat GPT. Of course, now we have advanced reasoning ability and the newer models like GPT 4.0, or possibly GPT 5 soon. All of these models uh, will gonna have a much better reasoning ability and they're able to fix this issue. But for now, the answer is gonna be 57, okay? Which is wrong, basically. That's why we have that X value here. Why is that? Well, because I didn't explain the to the AI model via the prompt how to reason, how to think. So let me show you the other way, which is what we call a chain of thought prompting. Again, sounds fancy, it's pretty simple. I'm explaining to the AI in simple terms how to do calculations. It's like a tutor that you are teaching the AI. So now if it follows the same examples, it's gonna do the math right, that's all. So Sarah has 10 pencils. She gives four pencils to her friend and buys a five more. How many pencils does Sarah have? So now I'm gonna say, this is basically as part of the example. I'm gonna say, Sarah started with 10 pencils. 
She gave away four pencils, leaving her with six. Then she, she bought five more pencils. So six plus five equal to 11. The answer is 11. Please note that this is part of the model input, okay? So here I'm, I'm explaining based to the AI. When I saw this problem, like, sorry, when I saw this example here, this was the output, okay? That's how you think, that's how you do the calculations. So now if I give it this example, if I say the library had 50 books, they lent 15 books to students, received seven more, how many books in the library? Now the AI knows how to do the math. So this is gonna be the output, it's gonna be correct, it's gonna be much better. The library start with 50 books, they lent 15, so 50 minus 15 equals 35. Then they received seven more books, so 35 plus seven becomes 42. So the answer is 42, which is correct. And that's the idea of chain of thought prompting. And that's it. That's all I have for this lecture. I hope you enjoyed it. In the next lecture, let's go ahead and cover artificial intelligence terminologies. Please stay tuned, best of luck, and I'll see you in the next lecture.